um, it's period for about 15 minutes and please limit your comments to three minutes so other members of the public may have an opportunity to speak if you are here for public comments um, and you're online please either raise your hand or if you're in the room please come up to the microphone at the front here <clears throat> Is there anyone in the room for public comments? I believe there is somebody online. Is it is that Dan? Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, I just want to make a quick announcement to chapter land owners that we have not forgotten to send out their chapter land applications. This year, the legislat legislature changed the due date from October 1st to December 1st. So we're holding off mailing out the applications until the beginning to middle of next month. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here for public comments? All right. Oh. Yeah, just come on right up to that microphone there. It won't sound speakers, and it's mostly for those online. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, a few of us are here today to um, talk about the uh, problems we're having with the Hadley Young Men's Club. And I know that's on the agenda, so I didn't know where this fell in now or after. But, you know, there's, there's a few things that uh, we're all concerned about. One is they've been violating their liquor license for years. Now it's finally come to a head. Um, their, their sound variance is also been violated. They're exceeding their decimal points from 50 to 92 the day they had that country in the country. But besides the liquor license, and they've been warned and warned and warned, I have five or six letters coming from uh, Carolyn Brennan and also from Jennifer James, uh, making them aware, making a ghoul aware that they continue to violate your liquor license. But there doesn't seem to be any end to it. On on August 13th, I even went to the Young Men's Club and I took pictures. I took pictures of all of them sitting on the deck, which they've been warned several times, you cannot drink on the deck. They got so many letters. I don't know what will happen for them to understand that they are not following the law. But one of my other reasons, and I think it's more important, if we think for a while about these events where students get bussed in, and then when it's time for the students to go home, a lot of them choose not to take the bus. They choose to walk home. And people up and down East Street, Rocky Hill Road, have told me the students are urinating on their lawns, they're, they're throwing up on their lawns, they're throwing trash on their lawns, and they're even passed out on their lawns. And let's take for a minute that there's a fatality after one of these events. And that's really what's driving me here. If there were to be a fatality, the Young Men's Club will be sued, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the lawyers will find out they don't have any permits for this. They don't have any license for insurance because they have no permits. That's going to fall on the town of Hadley. You guys. You guys keep allowing the Young Men's Club to violate their liquor license. As simple as that sounds, could be very dangerous one of these days. And I just want to bring that to everyone's attention because that is one of the driving forces that's behind me. I do not want my taxes to be increased to fund some multi-million dollar lawsuit when one of these students is injured after one of these events at the Young Men's Club because they carry no liability. And just as it happens, just like they keep throwing everybody under the bus, that's why they can, can keep drinking on the deck. They're going to throw the town alley under the bus and say, you guys have allowed us to do this for years. It's your fault. That's going to be a good court case. And I'm here trying to remind all the people, especially the people of Hadley, to join us and say enough is enough. 
if if bars in Amherst or Northampton or Springfield violated their liquor license as many times as a young men's club has violated their liquor license, their license would they would have been fined and their license would have been revoked or withdrawn for a period of time. There has been no action taken to the Young Men's Club other than writing letters, which they simply ignore. Simply ignore. July 5th of your last board meeting, Molly asked their legal counsel directly, will you be in complete compliance between now and November 1st? He answered, and I quote, yes, we'll be in full compliance. Not many days after that, August, the letters started going out. You're violating. You're on the deck. You're doing all this. So you can't take a word from anybody, even their lawyer. He says, we will be in compliance, full compliance, by November 1st, or up till November 1st. And that has not happened. So I'm asking the board and the town administrator to take whatever action you feel right. But keep in mind, you are representing the town of Hadley. And should some incident occur, you are going to be faced with some liability insurance that the town is not going to be very happy with. Thank you. I'll answer any questions if you have any. Could you just state for the record your address, please? 23 Chmur Road, Hadley. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank right. you for your comments. Thanks. We can't talk about it right now because it is a um, agenda item. But if you have anything further, um, when we get down to that, um, you're welcome. To I didn't know again. where to come in, but under comments, I, I felt that's a place. Mm -hmm. I can tell you our feelings, mm -hmm. and I can tell you what's what's coming down the road. And tomorrow, it's happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, from 2 to 9, they're having a, a summer endless summer event. They're busing kids from UMass. They've been selling tickets for two months. And I've been telling people around here, this is going on. And what they advertise on their website, two, two bars, two special bars, DJs, vendors, what kind of vendors. Do they have a permit to, to sell food and vend their truck? The last time they had one of these summer events, Local bars like in Amherst, the, the hangar, they came to the club with a lot of other bars under this vendor category and had margarita contests. What bar could make the best margaritas? Now, considering, too, they advertise this to be 18 plus. You're going to have 18, 19, and 20. Three years worth of grads kids, college kids, they're going to come here Pay $10 for what if they can't drink? Play hopscotch? No. They're coming here to drink. I would like to go tomorrow or someone go with me tomorrow and see who's checking IDs. I guarantee you that freshmen, sophomore, and juniors are not 21. So why would they come and pay $10 and spend the whole afternoon here? It can't be just for hopscotch. Can you save it, Nick, till we get it on the agenda so we can talk to you about it rather than you just keep going? Talking? Yeah, Thank I you. think that would be better. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so anyone else for public comments? Okay. Is there a line? There is no one else online. So I know that um, I didn't say this when we came back into open session, but here we have uh, Molly, Joyce, myself, and Randy, and Jane Evan Smith is on the line. She's um, doing via Zoom today. Um, so for the consent agenda, we have warrant PR 2403, AP 2408, AP 2408S, AP 2407, AP 2407S, um, Historical Commission Resignation, Judy Stone, Police Department Resignation, James Ryan, Public Safety Dispatch Resignation, Elijah Edmonds, Common Viticular, Maple Farms Incorporated doing business as Maple Farms Food. Um, this is contingent upon building fire and Board of Health approval. I'm getting there. 
And then there is one that is currently on the um, consent agenda that we will be pulling for discussion. Um, and that's the one day liquor license for top of campus on uh, this coming Saturday. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda with that one item removed. Second. Uh, motion by Molly, second by Randy. Roll call of uh, discussion. But we didn't. We I know you needed that. The neighbor concrete are here. Don't have any questions. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Maple Farms? Nobody wanted to pull it out, so I'm assuming no. Okay. Love your place. <laughs> as long as, as long as you are, <laughs> as long as you have been inspected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So let's go ahead and vote on. It says to remove the one day of the week. Yeah, yeah. I, do, I, do remove the one. I did. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I removed that one. Okay. So um, let's do a roll call vote for the. Excellent. What we have? Uh, roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Heiser. Yes. And Nevinson. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um. So further discussion on the the one day liquor license. Um. We do ask that. It is contingent and required for them to reach out to schedule um with mike fire chief the fire chief sorry it's hard having mike and mike you guys can't <laughs> um and if they don't no, it's not a. It, it, that doesn't matter, yeah. Joyce. It, yeah, if you don't. It, it's it's contingent upon. They have to do it. No. So. Mm -hmm. So is that a? Are you making a motion, Amy? Or I'll so move. Okay. How's that? <laughs> so um, we. Yeah. So we will um, approve it. A motion to approve. Motion to approve. Um, contingent upon fire inspection, um, from our fire. Yeah, prior prior to the event and consumption or sale of alcohol. Second. Thank you. Um, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Amy, can I just uh, outline some changes? Yes. So a couple of things I, I would ask respectfully that we do have the part here who is on vacation, very powerful here. Um, if we could uh, if you consider moving the the abatement up, which would be uh, six point two um, before appointments. Um, appointments, if you're okay with that. Um, Troy, our HR director, he's on, but has does not have a strong voice. He's been very ill. So he's, um, if we could wait to address that next at the next select board meeting, okay, so we'll be taking that off. But um, appointments, yeah, the appointments, okay. Yes. And then, um, Algonquin 5.4, uh, Linda is on vacation, so she, her, and I would be doing that together. And I just forgot that she was on vacation, so we'll have to. That's a question about, um, a project to look at ARPA funding for it. Okay. okay. So we will not do 5.1 today. We'll move that to um, the next select board meeting. Um, and then are we good for 5.2 board and committee? Do 6. Oh, you want to do 6.2 first? Yes, please. Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Are you on mute? I'm oh, sorry. I there was. Yeah, I was. <laughs> of course I was. <laughs> um, so this abatement, it's uh, purely administrative. Uh, 221 Hockenham is a meter that is placed at Hockenham Cemetery every year. Uh, a meter changeout was done, um, and the changeout form was sent to Kim. And once you enter a changeout, it takes it from inactive to active. The reason we have a, a meter there is so that uh, the water department can keep track of any water that goes through the meter so that our unaccounted water uh, for D DEP um, isn't huge. Uh, we have never charged for any of the cemeteries for water. Um, so 
This is purely administrative. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Molly, second by Joyce. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chandler? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Yes. Nevinson? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, then we'll go back up to old business 5.2, board and committee appointments. Madam Chair, can I ask if they could keep the Constitution proclamation uh, uh, before we jump into the boards and committees? Yeah. The committees are several people, so it's going to take just a bit of time. Okay, so let's. Yeah. All right, 5.3, Constitution Week proclamation. Um, so we are going to proclaim the week of September 17th as Constitution Week as we had previously discussed and voted on in the prior meeting. Um, is uh, Betty Allen here? Yeah, Hi! Donna Hill from the oh. Seattle Yes, yeah, sorry. And Cindy Lawson. Hello. <laughs> All right, so do you want me to read the proclamation? <clears throat> Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Town of Hadley by the Select Board, Proclamation 2023, whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to rule by law, and whereas September 17th, 2023, marks the 236th anniversary of the framing of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, whereas it is fitting and proper to accord uh, official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate it and whereas public law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the president of the united states of america designating september 17th through the 23rd as constitution week now, therefore, we, the select board of the town of Hadley in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through the 23rd as Constitution Week and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by... Um, vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties, given this sixth day of September in the year 2023. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you for having support. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Street <laughs> and right down the street. Right Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Many a car had hit that. <laughs> Oh, yes, on that corner. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. So 5.2, board and committee appointments. Okay. So ambulance oversight committee. So what is the purpose of this? Are we are we are going to appoint? I think we're appointing the vacancies, right? Yes. You started your new procedure of inviting new appoint or interested parties to come and meet with y'all before you appointed them to the committee. Mm -hmm. So um, we have invited everyone here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple that I'm going to ask you to postpone due to schedule conflicts. I'm going to ask for Adam Burkalt for the bylaw review committee. He would like to come on the 20th. Okay. And for Iris Tang to come on the 20th as well. She's out of town. Oh, for CBA, okay. Mm -hmm. But I believe everyone else is in the presence. Now, are there, um, so for the committees with multiple applicants, are there, there are some that don't have all the spots, right? Right, so for Ambulance Oversight Committee, right now you have one, um, member who's available or what position open um, I believe and um, we're going to need an alternate that you're going to need an alternate member. so that would be my recommendation is that you talk to them to Walter Jennings and Susan Glasky both who are here and then point one is the member and then another as the alternate 
And then um, do you want me just to discuss all of them real quick or just do you want to go committee by committee? Let's just take one at a time. I'll do one at a time. So ambulance oversight committee. Okay. Walter, could you come up and join us at the table? Thank you. So, Walter, would you like to tell us uh, what's the nature of your interest in being on the Ambulance Oversight Committee? My interest is to give something back to the community. I live on East Street. I have a very strong background in emergency management, fire, police, well, more fire than police, but they are my neighbors. And if there's anything I could do to help them, that's why I'm here, just to be a part of it and help and give back to the community. Thank you. And we have Susan. Same question for you, Sue. Sure. Um, it actually, Molly and I had a conversation uh, a while back. I'm very happy to be an alternate on this committee. Um, my interest is uh, I expect that uh, the ambulance will become an important revenue stream in town. Uh, and given the um, upcoming capital uh, requests that will come from public safety, um, I'd like to be part of the team that makes that decision. Okay, so for the both of you, do, do you know when they meet, when they, when they have meetings typically? And my question is, is it going to be easy enough for both or either of you to get to these meetings? Yes. I do not know when the meetings are personally. Yeah, we don't have um, a set schedule for these meetings. They tend to be a little bit, you know, they can be ad hoc, but basically um, we try to meet once a quarter. Um, we meet in the evenings at the uh, public safety complex. Um, we, we've done them via Zoom in the past, but, you know, uh, typically we're trying to meet in person at this point. And usually the meetings start around six o'clock. Sometimes it can be, you know, we we try to be flexible and work with people's schedules, but usually it's about six to seven thirty or something like that. Six p.m. next door to my house is very doable. <laughs> <laughs> I see you got to come all the way from Plainfield every day. Or yeah. yeah. in the winter we get out at two, so it's no okay. big deal for me to be next door at six p.m. <laughs> he can pick me up if you have to. <laughs> So, all right, well, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint um, Walter Jennings to the vacancy uh, currently on the Ambulance Oversight Committee and welcome Sue Glowatsky as alternate. Second. All right, motion by Molly, seconded by Randy. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote, Keegan? Yes. Togolo? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Heiser? Yes. And Evan Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, bylaw Review Committee. So he's not oh, here. Oh, he's Thank not you here. Thank, Thank you, Walter. Watch your email, Walter. There's one coming up. Um, so then, because Adam's not available, then we probably shouldn't do the community preservation as well, CPC. So Brianna is here. We can, we can, do, we can appoint her and hold off on him. Oh. Good. In, in different committees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I see. I just want to give y'all a full picture of everybody. So, if you want to hold on that, I'm sure Brianna will come back if needed. Can't. Okay. Or can't she? Or, but we can, could, we can. How many open positions are there? One. Okay. Historic. That's historical. She, she, Brianna's interested in two. Oh. I think it is. Sure. Want to move to historical? Okay. And how many are available in historical? We had advertised for two people, but with Judy Stone's resignation tonight, that she three openings. Mm -hmm. And I will say for all of these, everybody who submitted a letter of interest, we gave them the letter for them to apply to. And then I encourage them all to reach out to the chair of the <clears throat> chair telling them about their interests. Mm -hmm. um, and so Brianna is here and Mary Harmon is here. No, I was Irene is done. Yep. 
and Mary Carney was here. I got <laughs> um, so they are all here from this I'm um, Diana, so I'm not yeah. so. and then oh Emma's not here. Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess we need to talk to Diana and see which if she's got any feelings. And who is this one? Irene. Right, who wants to go first? <laughs> Here by the mic, so I can go. Um, hi, I'm Brianna Quinn. Um, I grew up in the area, but recently moved back after about 15 years from Los Angeles. Um, and I have two young kids who um, now live here. So we have a very vested interest in settling down here and planting roots. And so I would like to volunteer to help maintain and preserve at least rich history as best I can. Thank you. Next. Um, I'm Mary Carney, some of you. Um, I have also returned to the area in the last, probably during COVID. I moved back from a long time in DC. And I've always been interested in history, and I live in a super old house. <laughs> uh, gonna learn more about history as I try to keep that thing standing. <laughs> and I just really am interested in, in learning more about the town history, preserving it, and making sure everyone has a chance to learn about it and you know, celebrate it. It's a really interesting campaign. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Irene. And I'm Irene Costello, and I to Hadley about 18 months ago, so I'm relatively new in the town, and I moved from the Boston area. Um, I have a history background, and what I have learned about Hadley, and again, it's rich cultural history, it actually just blew my mind, actually, when I <laughs> Then, because I live on the West Street Common, and um, I just renovated my house, very old house. Um, so I just, I, the more I am here, the the more I love learning about Hadley, and would love to have an opportunity to uh, become more active in the community. And how many of you have read the history of Hadley? Haven't I started it? <laughs> <laughs> the Hopkins Academy requirement. My mom was my history teacher, so I get it. She <laughs> got the angel of that. Yeah. Really? After the blizzard. All right. All right. It's a page turn. Nice. Are you referring to the book um, that... Um, history of Hadley? You no, know, the, the one that, that Mary Lou Cutter wrote. Mrs. Cutter's thinking. No, the, the Witch of Hadley? No, she wrote yeah. the history of Hadley in, in a form that the children could understand. Actually, I have the copy at home. Um, oh. It was signed to my children. That might be for like Gen Z. Oh, in fact, we had the very old style ones. Well, it's the original. <laughs> well, she was my first grade. Yeah, my kids are old too. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a very, it's very That's easy good. read. Yeah, mm. to the history of Hadley. So I know um, Diana's here. Right. Diana, who? I thought Diana, they, West. Diana West was here. Yeah. She is. She's on the left there. He can't. Oh. She's out in the woods. I can't read the glare. I can't read the screen. Yeah. Did you want him to say anything, Diana? Um, Diana West, one fifty four South Maple Street. I'll just say that I would be honored to have any of these amazing women join us on the commission. Uh, I know it's a tough decision as four people have applied and we have three open spots, and I hope. Uh, whoever doesn't get selected will consider us in the future as um, there are a few of us who've served on the commission for a number of years now and probably I think some of us are hoping to complete the projects you've started and um, eventually rotate off. So um, I'm just looking for uh, good dedication and hoping that we can finish our current projects and move on to new projects. And um, I've already seen some dedication from the people in front of you right now. And um, I would be happy with any choice that was made. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just thinking, I mean, I know Emma's not here tonight, um, mm -hmm. but, or excuse me, Dragon. Um, but they're also on other, other, mm -hmm. areas, you know, and yep. so, I mean, be great, you know. Get some new blood. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just, I'm so excited to see people that aren't, Always here. Well, I'm going to make a motion that all three of you 
get elected to the historical commission. Yep. I'll second. Thank you for coming out tonight. Yeah. I appreciate it. Nice to meet okay. you. Is there any is there any further discussion? A motion by uh, Molly, seconded by Joyce. Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And Evan Smith? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations please. and welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the first time we're filled up, so this is very exciting. Great. Thank you, everybody. Okay, and I think All I want to talk uh, do we have is Crystal available? Crystal actually was is actually in the meeting that's happening in other rooms right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because she serves or it's TBI is over there. She's actually in the meeting right now for them. She was thinking it would be earlier in the evening. Mm -hmm. um, what I can say is that Crystal also serves on the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Yep. And she's met uh, Mark and Tricia. Uh, Mark Dunn is the chair of the CDEI, and Patricia Rosmeyer is the clerk of the CDEI. She's met with them, um, and she is very enthusiastic to join. She, they did, and they said the same. So, okay. So yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Uh, motion by Molly, seconded by Joyce. Uh, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chandler? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Eiser? Yes. And Evan Smith? Yes. Thank you. All right. And saying we're going to wait to the CBA for that. And yeah, the 20th. Okay. And it was, it was really nice to see all the people uh, sending in emails as soon as y'all announced it and we put it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got people, you know, and with interest, it's great. And I sent them to the chairs and he all talked to the chairs Good. and came back to us. I thought that was really great things. Oh, excellent. All right. Um, old business 5.5, .5, Young Men's Club. How about the uh, gun clin? That one, we're, they're, we're yeah, we're yeah. holding off on that one for now. Okay. Yeah. It's yes, sorry, Young Men's Club are here, 5.5. 5. 5. Okay. So um, we, as it was mentioned earlier, we have received pictures of um, alcohol <clears throat> being consumed on the recently completed deck of the Young Men's Club. Um, so Carolyn and myself have reached out, which is, which I want to be very clear, is not part of their licensed premise. It is not included in it. Um, it was just recently completed, and it just recently received a certificate of occupancy. Uh, for the deck. Uh, so Carolyn and I reached out to the ABCC, but together we spoke to the assistant executive director, Ryan Melville, uh, and he um, explained a couple of things and had some suggestions on how to move forward with this. The first is, is that pictures from the public are not necessarily the most useful or admissible as you're moving forward to public hearings and then it's best for it to come for your alcohol enforcement office, um, which led to the discussion of the fact that the town highway has not appointed an alcohol enforcement officer. Um, he also recommended that we tighten the description of their premise and, um, and suggested that we reach out to legal counsel to help with that uh, appointing of the officer. Um, so then we reached out to Lisa Mead and uh, from Mead, Taliban, and Costa, our town council, um, and explained to her what we, you know, this is what we have from uh, the ABCC. We have these pictures. She said, again, that the pictures are not readily most useful pictures, even though they are very clear that there are people drinking alcohol on the, on the deck. Um, she did recommend a town of Hadley appoint an alcohol enforcement officer and the alcohol enforcement officers mm -hmm. come from the police department. So um, she does recommend that we appoint a police officer as the alcohol enforcement officer. And um, that officer, what that officer is allowed to do is that officer is allowed to enter the premise on your behalf, behest, um, without a warrant. They're able to take pictures, they're able to cite any violations that they see and they're able to bring them back to y'all. Uh, so what we need to know is what your pleasure is. Would you like to appoint an alcohol enforcement officer 
And if y'all would like to, then we'll return to, uh, we'll, we'll meet with Chief Mason, figure out who that would be, and we'll have um, County Council help with the memo and the duties of them. What other job duties would the town enforcement police officer have besides just policing the young men's club? The alcohol it's enforcement. A town, it's for anything that holds a liquor license? It would be for any any place that we would want them to go into. If if we heard or, or if the chief heard that, um, I'm not going to say any business to stay because I don't want to say any business as being a bad actor, but if we heard the location was selling to minors, then they could go in that way. Or if uh, someone's over-serving, if that's what they're there for. And they don't we don't service. we already do that, Mike? Wait, no. no. And and you need a certification from the ABCC and some training to, to do this job. Just be another duty for uh, a side office. You're essentially transferring your authority to that person who has that certification. And that wouldn't be their only job, correct? It would just be part of their. Yeah. Okay. And so, be, like, what type? What if I was going to say, person? what type of authority would they have? What, um, like cool. ticket. We will be good as well. Let's So Ryan Noble said that um, if this is something that we move forward with, that connecting the chief with um, their head investigator and that he will help with that moving that forward. Um, and uh, so that that's what we would have to do to, to have the alcohol enforcement office. So I think originally, um, correct me, but from what I understand, um, the club was not aware that the deck, because it was on the property and attached to the young men's club itself, was out of realm of their licensure. I, there was a very, if I may, there's a very easy way to correct that, and I was to call. But also, our building inspector did inform them as he was doing their um, application for the deck that it was not part of their premise and that they altered their premise. And so they need to get an alteration of premise. So to the to this end, also I have spoken or I emailed their attorney Tom Reedy, um, and he stated that uh, Rich Downey did not that believe that deck was included in the license and did not realize it, but now that they know, they will not use it again for alcohol. And when was this email delivered? This, this morning. Okay. Or this afternoon. Okay. Me. Um. So can they eat on the deck? Oh, yeah, you can. That's not alcohol. It's it, The alcohol is what this is about. Okay. This is about All right. the alcohol being consumed. Yep. And you have, yes. So, yes, they can have to put off that. But um, why don't they just. Mm. Okay, so let's get back to the, well, the issues at hand here. So, I would like to make a motion to appoint an alcohol enforcement officer. So I would or multiple. Right? Speak to Mike on that about him. Yeah, so that's not a, that appointment specifically isn't on the agenda. Yeah. So I think we know moving forward that we'll talk with Mike first and we'll bring okay. to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there a cost associated? You said the certification, like how long does it take? I don't know much about it. I want to say it's just some training and, and certification to to give you the authority that ABCC officers have as well as the, the select boards. Authority. So let's give Mike another duty to check into that to see what it would take. To, to so I, I have a question. Would it wait, be a minute. wait a minute, Jane. Just wait a minute, Jane. Um, to have you look into the ABC and see what it takes yeah. and the cost, if it's anything to the town for, okay. for us to do this. Sure. Or was that going to be, I think that would be Jennifer. Yeah. The, I mean, you know, he, it's, it's, his, a, it's his cost for the department. Well, it's something that we'll have to look at together is what I was thinking is that Carolyn and Mike yeah. and I would work together. And very, you know. Sure, it's manageable. Yeah. So like, would you be issuing tickets to people, like fines? Like what, what, I don't really know exactly how um, how the enforcement of a violation uh, mm -hmm. it can happen. I, I do know that there's probably stepped up punishments about it. It's probably something similar to Jennifer knows something similar to like Sorry. a bylaw violation where you can issue a fine or whatever. <laughs> well, I just mean like we don't have like a like specific enforcement officer, and then now we're getting one for a, a specific alcohol thing. Yeah. 
So after we have the conversation with Mike, then we need to know if y'all would like rules and regulations, such as y'all would put them in force policies and procedures and say, if you're caught drinking to a minor, we will suspend your license for this many days. If you're caught violating your license, drinking off premise or well, uh, not on your correct premise, we will suspend your license for this many days. And so we need to know, uh, are those things that you're interested in us exploring further and bringing to y'all as a select board are these steps you want? Do you want to? Do you want us to explore with Chief Mason having an alcohol enforcement officer? Do you want to explore bringing in rules and regula regulations? Yeah, I would um, say yes. I mean, I can't. But imagine. You also have a meeting next week with uh, Attorney Reedy and the club to discuss their licensing. Correct. They are bringing an application to amend their license to me. I am reviewing it with them as I do with all applicants of any liquor license, anything they want to change. You bring it in, we review it. I make sure that you fill out the entire boxes and everything, all the information is correct. And then I accept it if it is. And then I bring it to y'all and I take it to Chief Mason and Chief Technical mm -hmm. and the Billy Inspector. I get everybody's opinions and I bring all the whole packet to y'all and y'all make the decision. I have no authority. I have the ability to make sure that everything's in order and that I've got all the information for me bringing it to you. So mm -hmm. I'm really, it, we're not, yes, we are meeting, but it's a make sure the paperwork is correct and that they're, they're moving forward in the process to use in a correct way. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not making any recommendations or judgment about where their alcohol is being used. Mm -hmm. I also think that it would be important for us um, to note that we are going to have officers available or trained as enforcers, but that this isn't necessarily a witch hunt and we're not, um, you know, it, just so nobody claims entrapment, per se, kind of type of thing, that we're doing this because it's something that we should have done a long time ago anyway, and that this just happened to be the catalyst for us moving in this direction, um, and that this isn't, they're not going to be sitting outside the young men's club every day. It's going to be for anybody and all alcohol consumption in Hadley. And, and it seemed to me when you brought up the the alcohol enforcement officer position, telling Mr. Watowitz that his pictures were no good because he's of the general public, then my thought was, okay, we have this person who can take pictures that, that are legitimized, and then potentially, I don't know that we want to give this person the authority to grant you know give fines or or penalties they bring their information back to the board and then the board decides that's correct so you're empowering an officer to take pictures and to places, place in and then they can issue a citation telling them that they have to come back to you but for any matter to be acted on impacting a licensed establishment y'all have to hold a public mm -hmm. hearing due notice must be given to both the public and the licensee there, there are, there's steps and procedures you have to follow the way all the way through so it's not that uh chief mason would pop by um an establishment in town and they're like oh you're drinking outside and you're not allowed to you're shut down mm -hmm. here's your citation jennifer will be in touch to schedule your public hearing have a good day. Yeah. But they can uh -huh. respond to reports they, just like they would yeah. anything else, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. I have a question. Uh, so my question is, it shouldn't there be two people trained to do this because of illness and vacations? More than two. Yeah, I think that, I, that would be up for to, determination to later. To Amy's point. Let's see what um, it takes when you look into no. it. Yeah, I mean, we're mm -hmm. We're struggling just to just to fill shifts. We're down like five officers right now. I, you know, I, we're not going to be able to sit mm -hmm. outside every place that serves. So mm -hmm. more people should probably be trained to do this mm -hmm. if so that's do, what you want. Do we need a motion to authorize that, or you're saying we're going to take that no. on another agenda item in the future? It, it wasn't. We can't do that today. Yeah, on this agenda. Consensus. Mm -hmm. I can 
do the steps and then um, we'll add it to, we'll have a meeting, we'll bring it to the next agenda on September 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, this was an informative thing mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the pictures were brought to us and it is against, um, it is not licensed right now for that. Okay, so if we're close to being done with the enforcement, I have mm -hmm. another question related to the uh, men's club side of Wait. Yeah, I was just going to ask. So I think were we asking for the date specifically in November because that's when they have to re up their license? No, um, but y'all did when you when you continued the public hearing, you mm -hmm. had to pick a date. Mm -hmm. That was the date y'all okay. chose. Their license and their inspections must be completed by November 30th after have their paperwork complete for the new year. Okay. Um, I, we can, can I talk about that now or no? No. It's not really on the agenda. Okay. Agenda, and we were discussing Genesis Club and the license purposes. Mm -hmm. So I think I can say, and I'm working here. I think I can say that that comes up. That that is a normal thing. It comes up on. That's well chosen to do the reverse, but the license renews. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. I didn't hear you. So, no, I was just gonna like ask if they, um, had approached for like a. Um, change of premise or update or anything like that or that's what I, that's what I'm meeting with with reading okay to, to review the license okay and All right. um I'm concerned about what Nick said about the there's supposed to be an event there tomorrow so I just I just got a text from one of the board members who says that they do not have an event scheduled for tomorrow he doesn't know what, what that's about if you look, if you Google um, the endless summer, which is the name of it, so because I did search it, um, it comes up as a young men's club event. But when you click on the ticket on Eventbrite, so if this is if it's not a young men's club event, it might not even be. But when you click on on Eventbrite, young men's club endless summer, it comes up and is an event that's happening. It's an EDM music festival happening in Amherst. Um, and I've not been able to locate anything on their Facebook page at all for an event on at there tomorrow night so it's or on Friday night. Um, oh, yeah, it's it one thirty eight East Street. Yeah, it says that. It doesn't say anything about him. I find getting very annoying because the speech I started out this meeting with. But there is no event tomorrow. It doesn't sound like any, the board is taking this matter very seriously. I disagree with you, Nick. Potential liability. I think we're trying to work with everybody, Nick. Why more civil joints? Why? Well, let me to... let me give you an example, they because have... right now, just wait a minute. Okay. So right now mm -hmm. they are allowing, they do a lot of things for the town of Hadley, besides well, they, they're now letting the school department use their fields over there for JV and younger park and rec is using them for soccer they're they're maintaining their fields they're marking the fields and they're allowing them for no fee at all no charge so this and long they've long. done that for enough forever yes this, for this allows them to break the rules i'm not saying that no but i'm just saying that we're trying to let them they're breaking the rule we know they are how many times do you have to tell them letters going back and forth starting july 5th how many times do you have to write a letter and say you're violating your letter license? Now Downing is saying, we didn't know. Well, all these letters started July 5th, all the way through August. He didn't say once, but he didn't know that they couldn't serve at all. They don't know what their own liquor license says. I don't accept that. But respectfully, I'm very disappointed that this board is taking such a lax approach it is very serious. It could be serious problems. We have to go I with hope. litigation. We don't go in ramrodding. You know that they've been violating their license for years. You know it. You've what? been there yourself, Nick. You've been what? there yourself. Oh, oh now we have a Don't let him get out of control. Why? No, I don't. Maybe tell him. Stop him. One thing that I'm interested in the yeah. green thing that was the wrong thing to do. I understand that. And they, they didn't have all of these concerts back in the day. No, you knew it that all they wanted to do was make money, money, money. 
Point of order. One is the violation of the liquor license, and also they're violating the original agreement on zoning, what they were allowed to do. So these, that's a far in excess of what the zoning board permit allowed them to do. Is there we we are we have, of that also we're aware of all that and we're trying to deal with it and if something Nick, hang on hang on i can deal with it. if hang on hang on if there's an event there tomorrow like you're talking about it's going to be a whole different animal than it, it is tonight i'll guarantee you that uh -huh. okay. yeah okay. i guess that that was the question i just wanted to to pose mm -hmm. so so I'm going to repeat what I'm hearing. Um, obviously, it's extremely disconcerting if indeed they were serving alcohol on the deck. It sounds like the complication is a complication from, from taking immediate action tonight relative to that issue is that we've been advised by council and also the ABCC that unfortunately we're finding ourselves with no... Um, you know, teeth to to get at it. So now we have to do this enforcement officer thing, which sounds like everybody's completely on, on board with. Mm -hmm. But then second, to the point that Mike was just making, I was also going to ask, uh, we were crystal clear at that last meeting that they weren't to have any events that they wouldn't be properly mm -hmm. licensed for. And they moved the October one. At that yeah. time, there was Oktoberfest. And then I, somebody else had, that's not here tonight had made me aware that there might be something happening in September. So it sounds like we've got an issue where, you know, once something's out into the ether, uh, sometimes it's hard to get it out of there. So mm -hmm. there's some remnants of plans that they likely were had in the works. But my understanding at the moment is that we don't have any evidence that there is anything occurring between now and November 1st, which was when That's my we had extended it. It's my uh, so to Randy's point, I think I will go on record saying it if, in fact, they are having anything that's going to There's violate tomorrow night. their yeah. zoning Stuffing. and potentially liquor license, mm. then that would be something that we would need to act on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. like immediately and then my question about that is how how would we actually go about doing that right you have to reopen the public hearing you have to notify them mm -hmm. advertise it everybody mm -hmm. yeah so uh, just just so long i assume there's an affidavit to the mx club that's basically cease and desist for anything outside of their current licenses is that correct it didn't take the form of an affidavit but at the at the mm -hmm. hearing that we opened we had an agreement with them um that their council and you heard it i mean so they their council represented that they would be fully compliant with their licensing um between now and when the hearing was continued mm -hmm. including their zoning uh yeah because that has a bearing on the yeah. licensing what their what an allowable use for the property is right Thank you. yeah that's my understanding mm -hmm. yeah well i'm just asking yeah. if there is since you are the authority mm -hmm. have you recorded with them that position other than the verbal statement with the attorney uh just the letters that were sent carolyn right mm -hmm. yeah and several emails back and forth yeah. so so they're asking a written communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everything was the meetings are all recorded so yeah it's not like it's was done in the back room and it's in the back room we just asking mm -hmm. Is it recorded in the answer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So hypothetically, what would the young men have? The young men still have to do right now. Not only violate everything they have, but even do it, but no one is doing any action here. What would they really have to do before the board takes some action against them? 
have somebody fatally hurt leaving one of these events, having somebody not fatally but severely injured, what's it going to take? But there's no evidence of an event is the problem right. that we have right now. Nick. I mean, we got a lot of events we have an event. Which we're addressing through this hearing. I took a picture, and I can't be used as information because I'm the wrong person. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to talk to other cities in town. I'm sure they don't have all this information. You're not saying you got to have special police officers. You violate your liquor license once, twice, three times you're out. I'm pretty sure Northampton, Amherst, mm -hmm. and Hampton all have an enforcement officer. Yeah, uh, that we just don't have one. Out there. Right. And if you think if you think about it, the technology that's out there today, and I'm not suggesting you would do this, mm -hmm. but somebody could mm -hmm. take a picture and embellish it. Mm -hmm. And it makes it make it look like, yeah, this is the real deal. Photoshop. So that's the problem that we are we. But that's why we have to have the enforcement officer. So that's fine. It'll be something. After this, it's going to be. And I hope not. I hope not. We hope I not. Hope not. I have we, we're we're back so as a resident of Hampshire, we were treated similar to a noise violation. Is that correct? Meaning, if we know there's a violation, let's pick noise. They will complain. The police department is the enforcement authority by the bylaws. Mm -hmm. We violate the police department, mm -hmm. name, address, and serial number. Mm -hmm. We the police department. We believe there's a, a violation in the process. Mm -hmm. They please respond to it. I assume the same would take place if we thought we're not, we're not that I'm hunting for a liquor violation. But the same will take place if there's a liquor violation. I mean, kind of, but we don't have a officer right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it would go. Yeah. Once the liquor enforcement officer mm -hmm. to speak, yep. and we know it's Officer John Doe, mm -hmm. we still don't notify the police department. Mm -hmm. They were named address and serial number, mm -hmm. and then the police department would respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think to answer Jennifer's question previously posed, secondary question is I do think that as a logical next step, we are going to want to have rules and regulations that we fall in, in terms of the enforcement side of it. Right. So that's completely, I mean, that part is completely up to you. You can decide if you want, if you want the enforcement officers to be able to take certain actions mm -hmm. on the spot or if you would prefer jennifer's approach and that they you know would issue notice and bring the the people the violator back in front of the board um yeah i, I think that's the most discretion. appropriate to yes you afford the officer the right we can't safety can't to take immediate action it doesn't oh, it's life safety. If it, yeah if it is life safety yes but we can yeah Sorry. Well, I think that we're getting really deep into the weeds with yeah. um, that officer. So I think yeah, let us do our home we'll work, work with Mark mm -hmm. and bring back some recommendations for you. Because certainly reassure if there's any public safety issue, they can right. really respond. And if they observe something, they report back to us. Mm -hmm. I know we would love everything to just go away tomorrow, but unfortunately, like it doesn't quite work that way. Right. The uh, policies. You said the rules for policies. Right. So it sounds like you don't have a really liquor license policy. Like after you violate is this, this is what you do. You violate this and we get if you don't talk is not having her policy mm -hmm. and monitoring liquor licensing. Is that correct? Jennifer? The town is called the ABCC guide. The town of Abbey have its own policies. No, the town, as with many of the town policies, we follow the state guideline. Um, Madam Chair, I'm going to ask if we could very quickly follow up. We said we're going we're to lose the connection 
with oh. forced redo on the computer. So the state policy. Hang on, sorry, we have to stop talking right now. Yes, so just you may do that. Oh, We're just calling a recess because this meeting has gone for so long. We need to reboot everything. So we need to stop. Everyone needs to stop talking until that we are able to reboot. So do we have any further discussion for ourselves on this? The, the Young Men's Club? No, I think we've, we've given we've, the chief um, direct, the police chief. Mike, and Jennifer. And Jennifer, direction. Uh, direction on mm -hmm. to a, on how to move forward. And that will be at the next meeting, so we're moving it along. Okay. No, I'm asking. Like, yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. September twentieth. I will have um I'll have the I'll have all the information gathered for y'all to, to review and make choices. Okay. Okay. And we all right. have another update also. Um, any licensing or anything like that yeah. at that point too. Yes. The that AEO officer would be just it would not be specifically for the youngest, but it would be for the town. Correct. Okay. And Jane, do you have anything else? No. Okay. All right. So we have our direction. We know what we're doing. It's also going to be on the next meeting. Okay. New business. Fire department review. Yep. Fire department review of a one-day liquor license for uh, top of campus McGurk hospitality and concourse concessions. Are we passing over that? We, did that we already did that one. Did we? Yeah, this is the uh, This the, is for Yeah, the the uh, item says that Chief Spanknable will review the fire department requirements. And so that's so that, yeah, so that's for this coming Saturday, the twenty third, the thirtieth, October seventh, and November fourth. So okay. So they'll have to still notify you. You get that done. Okay. For that license to be issued. We did five point or we did uh, six point two. Yeah, correct. Um six point three ambulance contract. Night. Okay, good night. Thank you for coming. Can you may you have a very quiet weekend? Thank you. I think you will. I see it in the gods. <laughs> if I call your house, you can pick up the phone. I will. <laughs> Let me give you yours myself. I answer that all the time, Frank. I can give it to you, dear. All right. Go for it, Mike. That's. In your court, I you guys have reviewed the ambulance contract that was sent out with the attachments, the mm -hmm. exhibits. Yeah. Uh, I went over the major changes. Um, the contract is a big one. They decreased our contract to 180 thousand this year from 299 four. Uh, that's for so for fiscal year 24, and then we have the option of an additional year if we'd like. Uh, they also did a updated payment terms, which you can see. So you are still eligible to earn back that entire subsidy based upon their examples. They kind of gave you an example of uh, what their milestones are that they have to meet to hit that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this year, we did receive back our full 299 subsidy. So if you have any questions, uh, I think I incorporated everything that we had discussed in multiple meetings, along with oversight reviewing it. Yeah. Uh, so I would request uh, Mike Warwanka, the president and CEO of um, Action, has reviewed it. He's been more than accommodating for us, for us, even offering to help out with our transition to our own uh, emergency medical dispatching and also for billing when we bring our basic hands on service into, into, into service. I'll make a motion to accept the ambulance Action Ambulance contract with the town of Hadley. Second. Motion by Joey, seconded by Randy. Any further discussion? Okay, none. Uh, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chandler? Yes. 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 And then it's been. Yes. Okay. 
you should have the original to sign, and if you could get that to me, and I will make sure uh, Michael Ronka gets a copy. Okay. And I think, and I think we're, are we skipping 6.4? No, I can. We're still doing it. Yeah. Okay. The choice there, but I'm going to try to speak on his behalf, but if I miss something, um, have him um, pipe in. Okay. So at the annual town meeting of last year, uh, the town supported the uh, addition of a land use coordinator to help out four departments. It was going to uh, conservation, planning, CPA, and ZBA, with some administrative assistance. And um, so we have got that. Uh, Troy did a lot of work, got some comparison job descriptions. And so we are really moving forward with any new job description that we put together that the select board would have time to review it. And vote on it. If they had any questions about it, to do that. So. How are his hours going to be divided up? I see, you know, what your percentage is. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be who needs the most help that the, week? So it's going to be obviously the CPA is going is going to be. Um, I'm going to call it seasonal. Mm -hmm. uh, August they're busy in the beginning of September. And then um, late winter they're busy. Um, so that will be where a lot of the for support. Uh, the majority of it is with conservation, but then it's split equally. And Troy, if I'm saying this wrong, it's going to be equally it's split up between planning and CPA. Mm -hmm. So now, obviously, in an hour, in, in a, I'm sorry, in a 40 hour, 40 hour week, um, the position is not going to be consistent every single week. Yeah. This is 35 hours, right? There, I'm sorry, 35 hours. This is the best way to present it. And Troy, I saw you just. One, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, nothing other than it's uh, combined with the conservation uh, agent's position. So it's 51% uh, conservation agent and 49% to the land use coordinator. Uh -huh. And we uh -huh. have had all the chairs of the respective boards and committees uh, provide their input and review the job description as well to this point. Do we have a price tag on this yet? Well, it was in the budget, so I have to look at it. Okay. I'm not to Motion to accept the um, position of land use uh, coordinator. Second. Motion by Joyce, seconded by Molly. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote, Keegan? Yes. Chandler? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Iser? Yes. And then Yes. Yep. Sorry, I should have done 6.5 while Mike was still sitting up here. That's you, Mike. <laughs> he can, Firefighter vacancy. He can handle the big walk. One. He burnt his head. Uh, all six <laughs> steps. So um, I'm here tonight to make a request. Uh, as a result of the decrease in the FY24 contract rate of action. Uh, having a discussion with Carolyn, Linda, and all members of the Ambulance Oversight Committee, uh, I'm requesting one additional firefighter to be hired so we can actually truly go to a 24 7 uh, full time fire department. Uh, the fire department can actually present to fire goals and second overnight. Uh, this would not give us a little thing as good. Uh, the capital budget for the ambulance was budgeted for 299440 So that position would be made part of that uh that, that line item, basically. Um the estimate with all the with overtime uh EMT stipend. I right now they're on a four on four off. So using those numbers, a four on four off schedule, uh, I have to budget up to forty eight hours uh, under FLSA for that. Uh, it's approximately about sixty five thousand dollars for that employee. So that includes their EMT stipend, clothing allowance. Uh, their rate is twenty two thirty two an hour. That's the step one of that firefighter EMT. Um, so I'm making that request. It would be a huge step for the town of Hadley. And we still have the safer grant in. I don't know what point they're at in the review or if they've even started that process. 
we're just getting a little bit ahead of that. Um, this would be that the, 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 all the members of the department are hoping that you will, uh, be willing to support that. We do have the funding, uh, for it. Uh, just some concerns so you're aware why it's also a help to us. My deputy chief is currently out with an injury, uh, and we're trying to start to send some of our members to the academy. I also have one firefighter that very, may very well be deployed in the next six months for up to a year overseas. Uh, so we kind of need the spent strength to be able to maintain. So I'm asking for your support in it. And we currently have, uh, we're in the process of hiring the one that was approved in the 24 budget. So we would just be pulling two out of that pool. Uh, eight, the HR director, Troy, has, he has, uh, we have eight folks that have applied for the one position and we would pull two out of that. Wow, pretty good. Eight. And can I just ask Carolyn, um, in the meetings that you had with uh, Chief Spank Nabel, were there any concerns that were raised? As far as this position, no. I, I'm I'm actually more concerned about the welfare of the remaining employees right, right now. It's critical, um, and it was it's just really truly a blessing that that it's going to fit within that budget, so it's not going to be an addition next year. Um, and uh, well, and you can share too. We did get the license for the annual one, so that's mm -hmm. ready. We've got a few more things we got to do, but we actually just received our our medications license. And so we will be picking up our medications for our ambulance. We are now just waiting for numbers for, it's amazing the amount of numbers you need to go to the next step. Uh, so our matrix numbers, which is some type of reporting system uh, through the state for our, you know, for uh, when we respond to a call. Uh, and then uh, we're, we're ready. Our folks are actually training with action right now. So we're riding a third. Uh, some of our members have already made four runs with, with action um to the hospital to get used to this so we're working diligently on that and i can tell you all our guys are chomping at the bit to to get this started so we're pot committed and again it's just it's been a struggle getting every, everything uh getting everything done but it's been a real team effort including action to help us with the billing side of it so and again just remember we also received back our full subsidy for that you will be getting back this year yeah. and the hope is to talk with the financial team on how we're going to deploy that and just um so the rest of the board knows too with the conversations with action um and through the ambulance oversight committee um basically we're back up to pre-pandemic numbers the call call volume is not going down mm -hmm. um if anything and this is widespread right um mm -hmm. what most municipalities are seeing as their call volume is actually eking up there and Hadley is absolutely no exception. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, from my standpoint, a concern I would have is, is there any stress tests that we need to do on, on that action contract? Could it go in the wrong direction? And it seems pretty solid. So doing this right now mm -hmm. just seems like perfect timing. Okay. Motion to approve the requested firefighter position. Second. Motion by Randy, seconded by Joyce. Any further discussion? This has been my life dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote, Keegan? Yes. Yes. Carson? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, and from the department, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Mike. you. Go get those hires. <laughs> Um, just a, a, a FY, there is an uptake in COVID, so you know people should be monitoring what they're doing. <laughs> yes, thank you. Mm. All right, any other uh, items not anticipated? Nope. Great. Okay. Town administrator report. <laughs> Sorry. Same as every time. Quick. I just like I should go. <laughs> beginning of it, but um, just a reminder: of October fourteenth is the. Uh, the DPW open house. Uh, we are working now with Lauren Trombley, Scott and I, who is a phenomenal event planner. You can find money anywhere um, to help us fund that. It's, it's going to be refreshments, hot dogs, and hamburgers. And we're looking to even combine it with another entity. So, but I haven't really told the DPW if he's still this study yet. So we're going to work on some recommendations for that. Uh, I'm just skipping through here. I know Mike's still here. Fiber had a little bit of a glitch, um, but you found a solution that was my own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Um, actually, could I just say a lot? He actually just went live in the library today. Awesome. 
We have a computer that you have got access on in the library. We'll go over the Great. Thank you. You added to my report. Um, the classification compensation succession, Troy did give the Collins Center a little nudge today because uh, it's not going as quite as quickly as we would like to. So um, uh, it's looking forward to Troy being back nice and healthy next week. Uh, special town meeting. I'm just trying to go through this. Anything I put in red is an update. Uh, the, the copiers and printers have been installed in, in an archaic, somewhat of an archaic electrical system. They did need to have some updates done to support those, but um, Gary Berg's on top of that. Uh, so COA Solar, we are exploring some other options that we have just discovered that some municipalities are using to get solar, so we'll keep you updated on that. Town Hall uh, Columns, we met today with the architect, the firm, Gary, Jen, Jennifer, and myself. Uh, just to make sure um, any concerns, you know, because we did have a problem the last time. So it looks like that's going to be moving forward sooner than later um, in the next two weeks. And uh, Jennifer and I are working on some things we want to do to make sure um, HR is involved, Troy, with some of the impact of having, you know, chemicals being used and stuff like that. But we will keep you updated on that. The Russell School Reduced Feasibility Study, we had 26 firms request proposals, which I'm not sure I've ever been a part of a procurement that had that many. So that's that's moving along. And uh, Jane can pipe in. I don't know whether she, if she has anything to add, but on the 23rd and the 24th, um, it was very dedicated to levy, um, the, the levy rehab and resiliency uh, study that we're working on with Woodard and Curran, and as well as the Hadley Flood Risk Management Outreach Project. We met with a lot of stakeholders, uh, FEMA, NEMA. Um, there, so, there's so many acronyms, I, I can't even keep track of them, but it was all hands on deck just talking about moving forward to this massive, pro, uh, either a reconstruction or just a repair that won't happen for many years, but we're building up with that. And the good thing is uh, Senator Comerford was there as well as Representative Kerry, and they are totally on board, totally committed to helping us in the future to help fund this massive project. And uh, we are going to apply for a community compact grant for some budgeting HR software. And um, I know there was a request when I wasn't here about getting some legal updates. I will add that for the next meeting. Some of it will be in open session, but due to confidentiality and possible litigations, that's probably going to be an executive session. So you are going to see some executive sessions in the next few, few probably few months. So that's what I have for you tonight. Okay. All right. Are there any um, items for future discussion that we haven't already talked about this evening to go on the next agenda? Just the ones from before that we still haven't talked about. Mm -hmm. um, any liaison reports? Okay. All right. So we need to. Oh, sorry. Announcements. Of course, I have that. Every uh, couple of weeks, we do have some uh, people that have passed. Um, we have Joanna Paddock, who was uh, a Waskevich, sister of Bernice Baranowski. Uh, so our condolences to Bernice and um, the Waskevich family. Um, David Koloski, um, he was a Hopkins Academy grad in 1964. He passed away, I believe, in Minnesota. I think that's where he was. Um, I'm kind of thinking his dad was the uh, police chief. Here, he was. Um, Pulaski. Yeah. yeah. So that was many moons ago, but I've been around many moons. So, yeah, David, uh, our condolences to uh, any relatives of David's. And then we also had the passing of uh, Peter Skip Nabala. Um, the young gentleman uh, certainly passed too soon. So our condolences to his wife and uh, brothers and sisters um, and his daughters. So our condolences to to them. All right. That's, it. That's all I got. Any other announcements? Chicken to go for the uh, Legion. I think it's uh, September 24th. If anybody wants to get tickets, uh, I think uh, yeah. <clears throat> Did I know it was chicken to go? Chicken to go. I did. I did. I did. 
I think uh, the sea, uh, the chicken can be picked up at 12 and 4. I think Denise Devine has some tickets that I'm sure other people at the Legion do also. <clears throat> and I think, okay. I have an announcement. announcement. Yeah? There's an Eddie Foreman concert. It will be Sunday, October 8th. There's a fundraiser for the Friends of the Council on Aging. Tickets available at Town Hall or in the Collector's Office or at the Council on Aging. Is that an inside or outside event? Weather permitting, outside. Okay. He'll blow the roof off of here. Lupai, shupai. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make a motion now. Um, we're going to adjourn and then move into executive session. Um, moving from open meeting to executive session. Um, so the select board will hold an executive session for the following purposes per MGL chapter 30, section, uh, 30A, sections 21, um, A to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel, um, human resources, and per MGL chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining agreements uh, to, um, with respect to collective bargaining, as well as negotiations with non-union personnel, DPW director, um, also for contract negotiations with non-union personnel, fire chief, and for um, <clears throat> discuss strategy with potential litigation um, for police or um, with police department uh, not to reconvene in open session um, and we have uh, to discuss the strategy with respect to um, open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body second Oh, I need to also say that it is for the UPSEU local uh, 424, um, Unit 129 Municipal Employees, and the UPSEU local 424 Unit Supervisors Union. Right. And we will not reconvene in open session, which I think I said that before. <laughs> okay. Sorry, that was a mouthful, but there was a lot. I see what I did to be there. It's okay. Yes. Parsons? Yes. I said? Yes. And Neville said? Yes.